Greetings, and welcome to the Open Minded Skeptic Podcast. My name is Sharon Ann Rowland, and I'm your host. On today's podcast, I'll be sharing some highlights from a July 2017 interview with the divine Will Berlinghoff. Will has a BA in psychology from Calgary. He's a multi-dimensional counsellor, a channeler, and a visionary mystic. Will has been the voice of cosmic awareness for over 13 years. Now, some of you may already know this, but cosmic awareness is the force of consciousness that expressed itself through Edgar Cayce, and who again speaks today through Will as the world goes through a time of extreme transformation. For those wanting deep personal insights, Will's channeling can result in profound spiritual, psychological and emotional healing and self-growth and development. He is also a multidimensional psychologist and counsellor and offers a unique technique of therapy that he has developed called Trinary Regression Therapy. Enjoy our second set of highlights from this interview. How do we identify or how have you identified like the kindred souls or those people that we're supposed to meet up with? Is it a vibrational feel or something else? Yeah, I think a vibrational spe- uh, feeling is involved here. But I think for myself, the best way for me to ex- explain it is it's empathic. It's from the heart. It's just this feeling of things. Yeah, you, and, it, you just kind of feel a connection. Is that what you're trying to say? A connection with that other person. And I think people, you know, everyone always has that throughout life. There's some, mm-hmm. there's a person that you just sit down and talk to and it's as if you've known them for your entire life, but you've just met five minutes ago. That's right. That's a very good description. I've experienced that many times over. A knowingness of that person that does not have anything to do with how long you've known that person. Yes, it's yeah. you just know you can trust them, or or again you know to be wary of them. So that's the point too, yeah. Mm. A lot of people, I find, I find it funny how people when they discuss soul contracts, they're always talking about how they're going to bump into the best their best friend, or they never ever imagine that somebody a little negative is going to still come into their lives from their past. But I think right. I think it's shades of grey, you know, there's never ever someone completely evil or somebody completely good. We're all on that scale of grey and I think certain people come into our lives to give us lessons, you know. Absolutely. You know, and sometimes they're a hard lesson, you know. Well, you know, we're familiar with that very popular term soul mate and that's taken on a romantic quality. Yeah. Oh, he or she is my soul mate. And there's always only one. (laughs) Yeah, and it's only one. But what if we use the term mate as we do here in Australia to indicate friends and and people who are our mate, Mm. you know? Not in a romantic sense. Yes. And what if we do have this uh, process that happens before we come into existence where we make agreement with others, okay? And we say to someone in that state of a complete awareness of the totality of things that, hey, in this life coming, I want you to come into my life and I want you to be a miserable SOB to me. <laughs> and, and you're going to be the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Because I need to learn this lesson. Yep, I think I that's need... exactly what happens. I think. I think so too. <laughs> so I so. Just, uh, I just find it funny when people don't think they're ever gonna, you know, plan an, a, a, like a lesson. It's always they're going to become enlightened. But it's a lot of people skip over. That you have to do something to actually achieve. Oh, something. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And if it is so that some of our worst enemies perhaps are our greatest teachers. Oh, yes, definitely. I mean, I look back over the last 20 years of my life and um, I've had some horrific moments with people. But if you then look at the next two to three year period after, what they Mm -hmm. taught me took me down a different path. You probably had the same. Absolutely. Totally. 
And that's why it's so important to realize in this journey of life, instead of being a victim, we have to realize that as creator beings of our own life with an intent and purpose, we actually take responsibility for our lives. Sure, things happen to us, and sure, sometimes that knocks us backwards. I could say to you, I never planned to be blind, but I definitely did choose it. <laughs> for the unique challenges it provides me. For one thing, I have developed my psychic vision to 2020 levels, you know? Exactly. Yeah. I may walk into the wall, but I can see <laughs> beyond it. about the inner being um does everyone here on earth have an inner being or are there some entities down here that do not oh absolutely all humans have an inner being we do. but we have to also understand that all those on this planet are not necessarily humans yes okay yeah. i do believe there is a group uh, that are soul less now uh, you've probably heard of the Orions, the Reptilians, the Greys. Well, interestingly enough, they have souls. I'm going to hold back about the Greys a little bit, but I know the Reptilians and the Orions have souls. But they themselves are used by those who are beyond them, or a group that comes from a different source. And now we are talking about Gnostic teachings, now we're talking about the Archons, for example, yes. and the Archonic, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and the Archonic forces that were created, and that's with quotation marks, in a different way than uh, humans or others that have a soul link or soul connection with the spark of divinity or this, the spark of divine source. And there are hundreds of ways of describing divine source. But anyway, so I do believe those are the ones that are ultimately at the very center of that huge web of conspiracy mm. that is out there that is bringing humanity into it constantly and keeping it ensnared and trapped. Yes. So yes, I do believe there are ones. I also believe there are ones who choose not to honor their soul spark, their divine spark. And these are the ones who can go into a satanic ritual and do horrible things. I don't think we need to go in that direction, but I'm very aware of this stuff because I also wear another hat, and that's as a therapist counselor. Oh, okay. okay. So you've, you've heard it secondhand. Oh, I, yes, I have had clients who've had their, those horrendous experiences. Okay. Um, but quite aside from that part of it, uh, what I am saying here is that when you have an awareness that it all is not always what it seems to be, and you have to overcome the naivety yeah. and presumption of life being something other than it is, or believing it is this, but it is really other than that. That is something that I believe is a soul's purpose, our soul's purpose, to become awakened, enlightened, Ascension, ascension is only taking another step up the ladder, okay? Taking another step to a higher perspective that says, oh my God, I thought it was this, and yet it's really that. I see it now. No, I agree. I agree. It's, yeah. I mean, and we've done that with so many things over the years. We, you know, you come back ten, two or three years after. I know when I, I'm a writer and I write something, I wrote something about five years ago, uh, one of my initial blogs with the magazine, and I reread mm -hmm. it prior to the last issue, and I was horrified at the way I was so glib about an event, you know, mm -hmm. and it, when you come back and you see something and you've, you've, I suppose, not raised your vibration, but you've just opened your mind a little bit more to, you know, and you then mm -hmm. reread something that you may have written years ago, in my case, yeah. um, it absolutely killed me to read it because I was like, my God, how could I ever have been, one, A, that naive, B, that uh -huh. glib, and C, uh -huh. that, that unsympathetic to, to people, you know? And 
Mm. So it's, it is. I know exactly what you're saying. So, yeah. And yet it's important to actually have that kind of an experience twofold. One, it helps you understand that's where you were then, but you've grown. Yes. And the second point being that when you encounter people who are like that, you can recognize where they're at. Maybe that's why I had that lesson um, just that month Absolutely. back because I, yeah. I basically I try and limit my contact now with a lot of mm -hmm. things so and a lot mm -hmm. of people because for that very mm -hmm. reason because uh, I, I suppose I see a lot of my old self in it. Yeah, and, and that's sometimes <laughs> a cruel reminder of how you used to be. Mm -hmm. But then do we think of a child or a baby even who's still crawling as like, oh, wow, they're really stupid. They can't walk yet. <laughs> no, True. it's like yeah, that beautiful it, yes. picture is a child. <laughs> we have tolerance because it's a child. Exactly. Yeah. You know? So we have to have tolerance for ourselves and love for ourselves, definitely, as well as those who are still in their places of arrogance, and there's an awful lot of them. Just walk into a medical facility and you'll find a lot of them, for example. Oh, yeah, well, that's one of the last bastions to fall, isn't it? So Yeah, yeah very <laughs> entrenched. <laughs> very <laughs> entrenched. But hey, bless them. <laughs> exactly. So you are well known for your prophecies. Do you have anything that you'd like to share with our readers for the tail end of 2017? Anything that um, we should be aware of or keep an eye out well, for? I don't normally make predictions because uh, it's, a, it's an interesting journey we're on, certainly, but it's also a journey that has many different timelines, mm -hmm. many different courses that could actualize. And if we are really uh, creator beings who can create our reality through our thoughts, through our beliefs, through our energies, mm -hmm. then I think it's actually a mistake to follow the predictions of this one or that one. Mm -hmm. Because what that is doing is marshalling your thoughts and your energies into a direction yep. where you may then have an experience of that. Because that's what they're trying to do. That's why they're creating a world of fear and angst and mm -hmm. paranoia. Okay? No, I agree with you. But what I can say, rather than a specific prediction, is that the next three months, August, September, October, perhaps four going into November, are going to be very, very dynamic. And this dynam dynamism, <laughs> this dynamic time will be very challenging. Now, uh, I've talked a bit on and off about there's one's in the shadow there who are controlling and manipulating. The good news here is that their time is running out. Mm. But the bad news here is that they're like a cornered animal. Mm. And they're getting more and more extreme in their actions. Look at the, the, the many, many false flag events that are told, or were told that this is terrorism, this is that. They're you know. ramping up, aren't they? It seems to be yeah. ramping up to something. Absolutely, and, and I'm, I'm sure many of your readers will uh, remember that the last few weeks have been very trying. We're just coming out of the full moon for July, and the energy in advance of that was extreme. Okay, I don't know if you felt it, but it was really challenging for us. Well, I but, did, and I mean, you, everything that happened in England, you had... Uh, three terror events in the period of six yeah. weeks. I mean, that was, right. that was extreme. And then prior to that, in Paris. And That's right. There's, yeah, it just seemed to be an ongoing, you know. And then prior to that, there was Trump's election. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that. That's a, We won't go there. No. But that's been a journey. We just, we that's just spent been an hour a, just debating yeah. what, you know, who, who did that. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But things are very seldom what they seem. And he's not what he seems. Even if he's portraying himself and being portrayed as a village idiot, uh, there's a bit more to him than most people think. Oh, well, there must be something to him. I mean, he's amassed a, a mass fortune, you know, and he's managed to make himself president of the United States. I mean, 
a village idiot does not become president of the United States, do they? That's right. That's right. And he certainly manages to shake things up. Mm. But anyway, but going back to your question. Uh, if these next three months are going to be very extreme, we are coming up to another one of these super moons or blood moons or whatever you want to call it, uh, and these ones do use those energies, then do expect perhaps some really big events, false flag events, that are designed to draw humanity into the spider's web even more and down into it. It's like going into the rabbit hole. So uh, whatever happens... The thing I would say is what we have to maintain is a kind of neutrality. Cosmic awareness actually calls it sacred neutrality. Mm -hmm. Where we stay at the center of the circle, we don't get drawn into the drama, we don't get drawn into the fear, even if we feel it, and many of us are feeling things that provoke that fear, okay? And just try to be the observer and watch it and wait it, wait out whatever's happening. Because if we're going to get some big extreme events, and we do know that there are some, there is some buildup uh, in the Earth energies too. We've had some major earthquakes, one in the Philippines last week, 6.9, I think. And then in Montana, they had one that was 6 something, 6.2. And the one in Montana is actually connected to Yellowstone, which is the big caldera that's underneath Yellowstone. Yeah. Okay. So there is a buildup. I'm not going to predict that some event is going to happen that is going to be of that nature, but I am saying that the energies are building up mm. and we have to stay centered. We have to stay within ourselves. And I certainly, certainly recommend that we start finding that inner connection to our own soul, to our own greater uh, uh, spiritual connection that lies within each of us. So what are your thoughts on mainstream religion versus spirituality these days? I mean, it's certainly, um, you know, front and center. Religion yeah. is being forced, you know, onto the debating table, you know, again and again and again. And not just the the, the Islam, Islamophobia mm -hmm. that's happened, but you also have a lot with the Catholic Church and the pedophile priests. And, um, mm. um, you know, it's, it just seems... Uh, well, and the census that came out just recently, basically, there's a dramatic rise in people that identify as non-religious or not atheists. I'm sure they, they're more agnostic in nature. But um, what, so yeah. what are your thoughts on just mainstream religion or, or as I call it, mainstream corporatization of religion? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, I think with that, it's very obvious that there is a distinction, a true distinction between religious and spiritual, absolutely, yeah. and that religion has been used to uh, control for thousands of years. I think Karl Marx called it the opium of the masses or something like that, um, and it has been an effective use of power and control to a group that have never questioned because they have always been taught to believe this is so. But mankind, womankind is starting to question. Yeah. And now that people are starting to question, they can't quite believe the ritualistic, dogmatic teachings of a church that doesn't allow some degree of compassion and love into it. I mean, we have such hypocrisies, such as the Muslim situation, where there's many very good Muslims, and then you have others who claim to be uh, jihadists, and they're there, and they're killing their own people, and there's no recognition of the absolute absurdity and hypocrisy there. Yeah. You know? You can look at the Catholic faith. That, that was my background when I was born. I was born into a Catholic family. And I managed to get through that and somehow leave that behind. I don't even call myself a practicing Catholic or a, a what's that term, a healing Catholic, whatever. But there is a term where people recognize 
that was once their frame of reference and they've moved beyond it. Okay? But there's a lot of guilt that's associated with this. And I think that's where religion still has powers that they still manage to guilt people out. Because what if there is a God up there who might be pissed off at me because I happen to be a human being? You know? And, and we are in a very critical place now where that distinction between spirituality and religion and being religious is becoming stronger and stronger. Personally, throw the religious ritualistic bullshit out the window because that's where it belongs, out there somewhere, not in my life. Okay. But saying that, I would also have to say, and yet I support each and every individual who feels that is still part of their need and who are committed to it. I may not agree with their attitudes and their beliefs, but I say they have the right to have it because that's where they are in their soul's journey. But we have, and by we I mean those who are spiritually awakening here, we have the responsibility to ourselves to awaken to the truth that lies beyond the religious context and control factor. We have that responsibility to say, I know that I am directly connected to that which is divine. And again, you can use whatever term, divine source, universal mind, infinite consciousness, as David Icke calls it, um, doesn't matter. We are part of something much greater that is a direct experiential experience, a direct uh, experiencing of the divine. Yeah. That is birthright. That is what we are here to know. And having religious beliefs does not allow one, in the strictest sense of that, to have those direct experience other than in the context of how they divine spirit. Yes. Okay. No, so I you could go for it. No, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. Um, I define myself as spiritually, so I'm like you, I was growing up I grew up as Catholic and um, I could never, I, my biggest objection to the church was the way that women were treated as very mm. submissive creatures and yes. the school I went to was a Catholic girls school and basically we were told we were told we weren't to learn science or math, we would concentrate on the wow. domestics and you know the girl stuff so that we would make um, our Catholic husbands you know happy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, and they, isn't that uh, isn't that a definition of prostitution? It, well, it never sat well with me, and I remember, yeah. you know, in I think year eleven, it, I was in the chapel, and basically I just got up and walked out, and mm -hmm. um, everyone mm -hmm. was most upset with me, and I was given three weeks um, of teaching the school about my class about the Holy Trinity as punishment. And um, although <laughs> it did actually put me, and again, this is a lesson. I really didn't yes. want to do that. But after I had pro, um, planned out the three weeks of lessons, I realized I wanted to be a trainer and a teacher. So it actually uh, it was a lesson in disguise. Right. Mm. right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. But see, that's how it works. When you actually can open up to the gift that is contained within that drama, then you will grow, you will open up in ways unexpected. And as you said, it's like you realized that you wanted to be a teacher and a planner. And that's that was a gift. But you could have also gone into radical mode. You could have been a rebellious teenager who said, F that. <laughs> and, and, and just gone into the face of it as uh, fighting it. It was, it was an interesting year, year 11, because I had a friend whose father was a mason and mm -hmm. um, it was my first kind of eye-opening experience of the masons and the lodges and things like that and I'd go to their lodge to have dinner with them and then my friend would get dressed up in a little white robe, she was about 13 at the time and she would go off and do a ceremony and then join me for dessert about an hour later. And, um, yeah. Yeah, you know, weird. I mean, when you're 13, you don't really think about things like that. But in hindsight now, I remember thinking to myself, how did that all happen? <laughs> and I didn't even ask her what was, yeah. where, where did, why are you dressing up like a, you know, a, 
a crusader basically Just, mm, you know, mm. very very mm. weird stuff Well, that's all for our podcast. Thanks for listening. And remember, if you want to support what we do, then share, subscribe, and leave a positive review over on iTunes for the open-minded skeptic. My team and I look forward to entertaining you once again in our next podcast. To check when our next podcast is, simply head over to www.tomspod.com. Com. That's www.tomspod.com. <laughs>